Well, hi everyone. For me, it's the most wonderful time of the year. It is back to school season where students are out picking up a lot of notebooks uh, and pencils and markers and all of those kinds of supplies. But knowing me, I want to show you today, instead of buying all of these things, how you can use OneNote uh, on something like your iPad to take great notes for school this year. So stay with me. Well, hi everyone, this is Crystal from A Crystal Clear Life where we focus on planning, organizing, and living a more simplified life. Now, at the top of the show, I said that it's the most wonderful time of the year. And as a retired teacher, I still get excited when I see back to school sales. I still get excited thinking about the newness of a new year and what students might be learning and what kinds of technologies they're going to be using in their classrooms. And for those students who are heading off to college, you know, it just gives me a sense of excitement. And that's probably one of the reasons that I went into teaching so much is because I really love uh, lifelong learning, back to school time, uh, stationary, all those kinds of things. So um, today I wanted, uh, for our students out there, uh, I wanted to go through uh, some of the benefits of maybe not always taking your notes in a notebook like this. Uh, I know that science says that writing things down really helps cement that in your brain. And as an educator, I agree with that. So today we're going to be taking a look at using the iPad and OneNote uh, and figuring out the best way that it can work. Okay, so let's get into it. All right, I have here a notebook from a student that I taught, um, high school student, and this was an honors European history class. And this notebook is filled with lots of notes that this student, student took uh, during my lectures and from uh, their textbook. And I wanted to show you uh, this page of notes uh, because uh, it has a lot of things that people talk about uh, being a good idea for note taking, okay? So you can see here that this student has used some color coding. You see some green on this page. You see some yellow on this page. You see some pink on this page. There are some sketches and some doodles, uh, which, you know, for that particular student really helps set things in their mind. And you see that this kind of all fits on this one um, eight and a half by 11 size page, okay? So this is a great example of note taking. And this is a good example because lots of people say, but I like to doodle and I like to be messy with my notes and I like to draw arrows and boxes and all of that kind of stuff that I can't do if I'm using a program like OneNote. Well, today I wanna to show you how you can recreate something just like this, make it look exactly like this, and then take it back to your desktop and enhance it even further. Okay? All right. So I'm going to lay down these notes. I'm going to turn the camera around and we're going to take a look at these notes in OneNote. Here we go. All right. So the first thing that I want to talk to you about is I want to talk about uh, what, I, what I did here. So on this part of the screen here, you see that I took a photograph of that notes page from that student notebook, okay? And then what I did on this side over here is I went ahead and recreated those notes um, on this side of the screen, okay? Uh, I'm gonna switch over and let you see a screen share of this so that perhaps you can read it a little bit better. Just please don't judge my messy handwriting. Okay, so you can see here on the screen, I have the photograph of the uh, notes from the handwritten notes page. And then over here, I have my own uh, written notes. And basically what I did is I was simply transposing what the student had written here and I wrote it in my own handwriting. Now, remember these notes were taken uh, in 
a lecture and from a textbook. So you see here that they have um, Babylonian captivity and they have information about that. There's a little doodle here about the cross, uh, that, it's, uh, that this is church related. Um, then there's an important date here and you see I put a key at the top. So dates are highlighted in blue. Uh, people are highlighted in pink. Uh, green is always vocabulary and yellow are important facts, okay? So as you go through here, you can see that not only did the student use different colors to represent things, but I tried to do the same thing when I was creating notes over here, okay? All right, um, then you get down to the very, very bottom and you see that there's a lot more information down here, uh, a few more doodles and that kind of thing, okay? The way that I did this was simply by choosing a pen color. So for example, choosing this black, and you can also choose the width of the pen that you would like to use. Anything from very fat, which looks like that, to very thin, which looks like that, and somewhere in between, which seems to be a good uh, width for me to use, okay? You can also uh, use the various highlighters. So all of the highlighter colors are here. So you can choose the highlighter that you want and highlight anything like so. Now, I am using a relatively old iPad. Uh, it does support the uh, Apple One Pencil, the first version of the Apple Pencil. Uh, so this is not the latest and greatest uh, technology that's out there. It's not an iPad Pro or any of those kinds of things. So um, while it may be a little bit more expensive, um, as a school supply, it certainly is a valuable school supply. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about why I feel that is the case, okay? All right, so back to the note taking. Uh, the ability to take notes in all of these ways is wonderful. OneNote has added a new pencil on um, this particular version of uh, OneNote, and it is this cool a uh, little pencil here that has the, a text box in it. So if I write something, it will take that and it will turn it into text like you see here, okay? Then I can choose my select tool and then I can take that text box and I can move it wherever I would like, all right? That's a pretty cool feature, but that's not how I would take notes in class. If I were sitting in class, I would stick to a standard pencil or a standard black pen, and I would take my notes as I would in a regular notebook, okay? Uh, so all you need to do is uh, go on here and create a page and you can get started. Let me show you how to create a new page. I'm going to go over here where I have my notebooks, my uh, subjects, and then um, the different sections that I'm working in. And at the bottom of pages, you're gonna say page, and that's gonna give you a brand new blank page, all right? Before I get started with anything, what I like to do when I am note-taking is I like to come over here to paper style, and you can choose very narrow lines, you can choose a nice like college ruled line, or you can choose very large lines, which is great if you're someone who has large handwriting, okay? I tend to like the middle one for my handwriting size. The other option that they have are grid lines. So they have very small grid lines, they have medium grid lines, and then again, they have very large grid lines, okay? If you are somebody who's taking a math class or a design class or an engineering class, uh, this may be the kind of paper that you want to use. Uh, I tend to stick with the lined paper because I just think that's easier for most of the classes that I would be taking, okay? All right, so from there then you can go back over here. You can, you have this variety of pencils that you can use. I generally start with a black pen and I write the name of the subject that I'm going to be studying, okay? So for example, um, if this is uh, honors history, 
I might write honors history up here. And maybe this is notes on the Black Plague. And I'm sitting in class and I'm not sure how to spell plague. So I'm just going to do the best I can because I can always fix it when I get back to my desktop. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to start taking notes and I'm going to be taking it on the black death, which is, uh, what the black plague was called. And I'm going to write down that the teacher said that that started in 1300 and Again, I'm using a mixture of cursive and print. And I'm just trying to get that information down. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about ship design and that better ship design led to year round shipping. And that was part of the problem. Okay. All right. Um, then the black plague started around 1347. So I'm going to write that, uh, the black death arrives in Europe. So you see here that I'm already starting to do an abbreviation. I can go back up here and say BD is black death. All right. And I'm going to write down some of the symptoms and bullet point boils and black spots under the skin and coughing and spitting up blood. Isn't that nice? It sounds like the black plague was a lovely way to die. Just kidding. It was a very tragic thing. Okay. All right. So you have some idea of, you know, me taking notes here. Um, and what, what you could do then is you could go back using that same key. So if you want to copy the key from page to page, you can, um, and paste it there. Okay. So now we have our key and now that we know that dates will go in blue, so we can choose our blue highlighter and choose our dates. And then we can go back and highlight the uh, important information when black death arose. Okay. And then we can go in and even if we wanted to, we could change some of these colors. So let's say as a student, we want to be a little bit more dramatic and we want to change this uh, coughing up blood we want to make that red. We can change that to red um, and so on and so forth. Okay. So all of that works great. Then if we need to make a little side box for important information, that's always a good idea. So we can take our highlighter and we can create a little box over here like so. And then we can go back and we can add uh, information maybe in that box about black death. Um, it killed one third of the European population. It truly was a pandemic, much like the pandemic that we had recently here in the United States. Okay. All right. So the great thing is, is that you can see, uh, for this particular page, because one notes pages are endless. I can keep going over and over and adding as much as I want that way. I can also scroll down and add as much as I want that way. I am not limited by simply an eight and a half by 11 page. Okay. So I think that is a wonderful thing about doing, um, note taking in OneNote. Okay. So you see, there are lots of possibilities for how you can take notes in class. And one of the beauties of uh, using something like an iPad, uh, in OneNote is this is your whole notebook. You know, this is 
this is it. You know, you have, it is about the size of this notebook. You know, actually it's a little bit smaller, but you can have all of your notes for all of your classes in this one device. You could even use it in portrait mode uh, if you would like to have it more like a notebook. You can even go up here to these double arrows and get rid of all your pages and notebooks and have distraction free, okay? All right, remember there's also a do not disturb mode uh, on your iPad that you can turn on or off uh, with your notifications so that you can set it uh, so that no one bothers you while you are working. Okay, so right here you see my do not disturb. I am working, my mode is on. Okay, so I'm not gonna be getting notifications. All right, now let's go back to the desktop and I will show you some of the things that you can do with some of your notes once you get back uh, to your desktop. We're gonna be playing around with this page. Okay, well, we're back in our dorm room. <laughs> we're back at our desktop, and I, I wanted to show you that because I have uh, everything stored in my OneDrive account, that everything that I take notes on on my iPad automatically syncs up to my desktop, and so that is not an issue at all for me. So now that I'm back in my, uh, room, I can go ahead and take a look at my notes. I can clean some of these things up and uh, fix them a little bit. So let's do that. First of all, I am going to uh, zoom in. You can still see I have my photograph of the student's notes that I took and then my recreation of those notes. So let's zoom in and take a look at some of the things that we can do now that we're here back at our desktop. All right, so everything looks the same, but the first thing that I would tell you is, uh, once you get back here, you need to take this title uh, that you created and you can either uh, lasso it like I'm doing here uh, and highlight all of that. You can go up to draw and you can go down to ink to text. Okay, and that changes challenges to the church into text. Now, the reason that that's important is because um, OneNote has a problem reading the title of the page if it's written in handwriting. So if I do nothing else, I always make sure that that part is typed. I can either do that in class as, I, as I'm setting up uh, for the notes as things are getting settled or as I'm preparing for the day. I know when I go to class, I'm going to be taking notes on challenges of the church or chapter 12 or whatever it might be. Uh, so I could go ahead and set that up ahead of time. Okay. All right. Now, then I can start looking at, uh, you know, maybe some of these things um, I did, you know, okay titles on there. But when I get down to the bottom here, I did not fix this one properly. I can lasso that entire thing and I can right click pen properties and I can certainly make the ink bigger like so, so that it stands out like these other titles, okay? Now, again, I'm not worried about making this neater. I just know that I need to be able to read this. I can read it fine, uh, so I'm not going to worry about making it Instagram worthy. These are notes for learning purposes. These are not notes to post on social media, okay? All right. Now, another thing that I wanted to tell, talk to you about uh, that is a great thing for um, note taking this, this way is something that you cannot do on paper. Uh, when we were in class and the, when the teacher was talking about the Council of Pisa, uh, there was some information about a pope and a pope and a pope, that there were three popes at the same time. And I got a little confused about all the names, so I just wrote down Pope, Pope, Pope. Now that I'm back, I can go ahead and do some research on that and write down the Pope's names, okay? Uh, another thing that I can do is, uh, I knew that in my notes when we talked about there being two Popes, one in Rome and one in Avignon, there were certain countries that supported the one in Avignon and the certain countries that 
supported the one in Rome. That was a little confusing to me as well. So I'm guessing now that we're down to three popes, it's going to be even different, okay? So what I can do is I can jump out to uh, good old Wikipedia. And I can bring up Wikipedia and I can actually uh, split my screen and put Wikipedia on one side and my notes on another side, like so. I don't want them uh, half paged, I want them full paged. So now I have the thing that I'm looking up, which is the Council of Pisa, and I have the Council of Pisa listed here, and I see that uh, there's a great map there that explains which countries were supporting which Pope, okay? It kind of feels like a, you know, who's in the World Cup and who's rooting for who. Anyway, um, let me go ahead and get rid of these pages so that I have a little bit more room to work. But I noticed that I don't have any room to put something like this map. Now, in the paper um, version of my notes, I would never be able to do this. But in the OneNote version of my notes, I can simply go up here and open up my draw tool. Let's make these pages as small as I can get them because I don't really need them at the moment. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to choose all of this, this Council of Constance information, like so. And I'm going to grab that and I'm just going to move it down here out of the way, okay? somewhere down below this other definition. That's going to give me a little bit more room for this map, okay? Now, I also want to be able to put in which popes were which at this point. So another cool feature um, that they have is they have this insert space. So if I go up here to insert, I can go down here to the insert space feature and I want to put those Pope's names right underneath that word. So I'm going to give myself about three lines. Wish you could do this on notebook paper, right? And I'm going to have room now to put those Pope's names, okay? So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go over here and I want to find the Pope's names. So let's go on down. Uh, was held in 1409. Yep, that's the date I have. So I'm checking my information. I know that I'm right. Um, the Western Schism, Benedict the 13th was in Avignon and Gregory the 12th was in Rome. Okay, so those are the two names that I need. So I'm going to go up here and I am going to click on Gregory and Benedict and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to come over here into my note and I'm going to paste that in right here. So control V to paste. And of course it gives me the source information, but because that information is already linked, I do not need that source information. So I'm going to get rid of that. So there we go because if I need to know where that information came from, I simply can click on that link and it will take me back to the page where that came from, okay? All right, now, uh, let's see. I can shorten uh, Avignon to AVI, so let's do that. And I can get rid of Gregory, oh, the word and, I don't need that. And that's looking like it's gonna fit right in there, okay? If I wanna make the font just a little bit smaller so that it fits, I can do that as well, okay? So now I have that the Pope for Avignon was Benedict and the Pope for Rome was Gregory the Twelfth. okay? Gives me plenty of space to do that. Now jumping back over here to my notes, I can right click on this picture and I can say copy image and then I can come over here to my notes and I can again paste that in, control V, and there is my map. Now I can pull it out of its little container and when I do, it's gonna get much bigger. But because it is a graphic in OneNote, I can size it to whatever size I want, okay? Now uh, that arrow 
is going to be confusing to me. So I'm going to go up to my uh, notes and I'm going to erase that arrow like so. And then I can put my map in a better place. Hold down my Alt key and get it exactly where I want it. Okay. Now, I have the Council of Pisa, I have the Pope's names, I have a map that shows who supported which Pope, okay? All of that is great. And this was then called the Threefold Schism, and it was in 1409. So I can move this back up here, like so. All right? Now, go on down, and you see there's another definition there that's highlighted in green. And then we have um, our notes down here about the Great Council of Constance. And we see, ouch, some doodles down here. Uh, someone was burned at the stake in 1415. <laughs> I think that's kind of cool uh, that you can add graphics like this into your notes. All right, let's keep it up there so that it is the same. Okay? All right, so I love taking notes on the iPad. I love the fact that you can have your work focus turned on and there will be no distractions, okay? I also love the fact that when you get back to uh, a place of work, your desktop uh, or your laptop, that you can go in and make these changes, okay? So you're able to create those headers that you need to create, all right? We could do even more. I could go in here and I could highlight this if I want to make my headers even stand out even more, I could turn this uh, ink to text. Okay, Babylonian captivity, add my Y to it. Uh, I could then select this if I wanted to, and I could go back to my home menu and I could look at different styles. You know, if I wanted to do that kind of style, uh, I could do that. Or, oh, I don't like that. I want the big bold print that I had. Sure, I can do all of those things, okay? If you want to erase this highlighted line, you can do that um, and you know make it snap into place if you want. Again, you can clean it up and make it as pretty as you want, but the important part is, is that you have the ability to review those notes within 24 hours and take a look at them critically to make sure that you are getting all of the important information out of them, okay? So let's look at my takeaways down here at the bottom, okay? So after class, we've reviewed our notes, we've highlighted what we needed to do, we made headings where we needed to make headings, and we moved things around to add more information, okay? Why is this better? Well, um, you know, on a desktop, you could add tags. Wait a minute, what do you mean you could add tags? Well, let's go back up here to uh, conformities and let's, uh, let's highlight that. Let's circle that. Okay, and let's do that ink to text thing. Okay, so now we have uh, that. Now if we go up to our tags, we can look at all of the tags that we have and do I have one for definition? Yes, I have one for definition, okay? Which highlights it green, okay? Uh, then when I do a tag summary, all of these that are green, I can do the same thing for this. So circle this, do ink to text. And then you can uh, highlight that and add a tag to that definition. There you go. You can highlight uh, something like this. Okay. And you can say, I'm going to insert a tag here. Remember for later or important. Okay. Then you see that there's an important tag next to that text that you highlighted. Then when you do your tag summary, uh, you will see a page, a study page that has all of your definitions listed or all of the words that you need to have definitions for listed, and it will have all of your important information listed. You could do the same thing with dates. You could do it with formulas. Um, what's another one that I put up here? Oh, things that you need to study more, okay? Let's say um, I wanted to put up here uh, this section for two popes, all right? 
So let's do this. I need to study this two popes part. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to add the study more tag next to that. Okay. Then when I do a search, it will come up and these will be like a review thing for me. Uh, so I think that's great. Using tags is great, uh, even if you're a student. Okay. All right. You can move things around. You can add tags. You can convert to text, which I just showed you. You can search things that are much easier. Okay. Now let's say I am on a different page. Let me go down here. to the page that we started. Uh, I wanted to find that page about the Black Death that we did, okay? Um, let's see if it'll find it. Okay, here's an untitled page, and it's in my 2023 Life Planner. Is that it? Yes, it's actually able to recognize my handwriting. There's the word black, black death. So it found that page for me, okay? So the search feature, even for handwriting, so long as you writing legibly, uh, is amazing, okay? So the search is much easier. Then when you are you know, writing a paper, you have information about that. When you're writing an essay or you're going to study, you have all of that right there. It's very, very easy to find. All right, so here are my big takeaways. Number one, all notebooks are in one place on your iPad, on your desktop, uh, and that makes it easier to carry around in your backpack as you're going from class to class. You can then study any time that you have your phone, your iPad, or your laptop with you. So let's say you have a few minutes in the library between classes, you can go ahead and go in and clean up some of your notes or review some of your notes, all right? Uh, third thing, I would always recommend that you use lined or gridded paper when you're doing notes. That way your writing doesn't get bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller. The lines just help you control things, okay? If you want to get rid of those lines after you have done the writing, you can take them out. You can change them. You can put grid paper behind it. It doesn't matter. Okay, so all of those things are possible. But when you're taking the notes, I recommend that you use lined or grid paper. Okay, if you want to color code your notes like we've done here for dates and that kind of thing, uh, important stuff, that's great. Also, if you wanted to color code so that all of your pages for uh, European history were green, you could do that. And all of your pages for calculus were blue, you could do that. Okay, it doesn't matter. I just think color coding sometimes is very helpful. It's a visual clue of what class you're studying for. Okay, you can also use abbreviations and symbols like we did with Black Death. You can draw arrows that means this led to or this caused an effect on such and such. You could type, write your notes if you wanted to, although I think that's a little bit harder to do in class. But if you're sitting in your room and you're wanting to take notes from your textbook, you could do it that way. Also here, you can add graphics like we added the map. PDF files, if the professor gives you a handout to read, uh, I think I'm gonna do another video on how to insert PDF files and take notes on those, because that's really cool. Uh, you can also add audio files as needed. Um, perhaps you're having a guest lecture and you ask, would it be okay if I record this so uh, I can listen back to it later? Um, that would be great. Or maybe you have a snippet from history that you want to, you know, one of the presidents saying sound clip uh, for a project. You can do audio files as well. Okay. All right. So I think it's a great uh, idea to use your uh, iPad to take notes. You know, whether you're a student or an adult taking classes, I use my iPad when I go to conferences. I use my iPad when I go to meetings. Uh, I use my iPad anywhere that I need to take notes because it's just a much easier way to keep all of those things together. All right, well, I've rambled on enough. Um, should you use your iPad for note taking? Absolutely, if you can, there are lots of benefits. Um, if not, you can always take paper notes and then come back and transpose them, uh, which is another good study tool, actually, to take those handwritten notes that you made in class, much like I did here, and take a copy of them, 
like I did here, and then update them so that you can add more information. Okay, that's just another layer, another enrichment in what you are learning. All right. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the box below. If you have any tips for using OneNote as a note-taking device for students or uh, for any lifelong learners, please go ahead and add those in the comments below as well. Uh, it's always great to learn from each other. Anyway, <laughs> ah, the most wonderful time of the year. Um, I don't know why people think that's a Christmas song. I really think it's a back to school song. Well, with all of that said, thanks for joining me today. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. And if you are about to embark on a class or studying or learning something new, I wish you all the luck in the world. Um, and here's hoping that you can live a more simplified and organized life through better planning. I use OneNote for just about everything. <laughs> Until next time. Okay. Bye.